All right, so first things first, before we start this video, let's put a face to the names involved. So here is Mr. Dr. Christopher Tufton, a Jamaican politician, a member of the governing Jamaican Labour Party, and Jamaica's current Minister of Health. So when I say that this leading politician wants answers from Bujabantan or is demanding that Bujabantan explain certain things publicly about his incarceration in the U.S., this is who I'm talking about. And here is Bujabantan. Needs no introduction, but for those of you who've been living under a rock, this is Bujabantan, the Grammy Award winning slash uh, reggae music extraordinaire, world renowned, who just did a decade in prison and is now home in Jamaica. It is a known fact that when politicians and political persons of power and others are incompetent in doing their job. They seem to always draw for reggae music, dancehall music, reggae and dancehall artists as the scapegoat, as the detractor. Don't look over here to see what's going on. Look over there at Bujabanta, him just come home, him did I sell coke, this and that, right? Welcome to SoFlo TV again everybody, it's your host with the most. So, I have this beautifully written article right here, a view from the outside. Bujabanta doesn't owe anyone an explanation, is the title of this. Beautifully written by Mr. Walker, for the loop, one of my favorite authors, okay? I've done other, um, I've used other articles that he's written before and I always say his name just to give credit. But this one, I'm going to read it and I'm going to give my own opinion as I read. Because I think this is very, very telling, very important to hear. Now, and a lot of the people are so brainwashed that they actually turn a blind, they turn their head to the direction that these people want them to look. And they fail to see that the person who is telling them to look over there needs to be looked at. So this person I've been wanting to call out and I'm going to. So the author says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. It was somewhere in St. Elizabeth, a Jamaica Labour Party political meeting was in full swing and the party bigwigs were in attendance. The rum was flowing and the reggae and dancehall music blared through the speakers. The song that was playing, me baby mother say me bad, me too bad, me too bad. Now I don't know if you don't know that Bujabantan song, if you're a Bujabantan fan, you must know that song there. Me baby mother say me too bad, me too bad, me too bad. That song there. All the party bigwigs played to the masses. They danced, pranced, and gave the impression that the JLP was the solution to Jamaica's problems. Dr. Christopher Tufton was there. Now, he was not dancing on a pole or anything, but he was very much involved with everything that is going wrong with Jamaica's health system. Minister Chris Tufton could not choose a worse time to publicly call on Bujabantan to explain his actions that landed him in prison. Stick up in. So, Minister of Health Chris Tufton has called on Bujabantan to explain his actions that landed him in prison. In prison. Now, this is causing widespread debate because a lot of people are saying Buju don't owe nobody no explanation he's gone through what he has gone through and he now has the right to reassemble get his thing back together get back on the road and stay on a positive path that's his responsibility now he don't owe nobody no explanation he doesn't owe anybody any details of what he went through and how it the whole breakdown and all that right my thing with Mr. Tufton is this. You see the whole dengue outbreak in Jamaica? 
This is the same Minister of Health that came out and said, Jamaica don't have nothing to worry about. Dengue? What dengue? Nah, sir. We're good. And then people started dying left, right, and center. And then he came back on TV like days later with some emergency meeting needed. It is an epidemic. People are dying. Dengue breakout. Same Christoph then. And guess what? People have continued to die since then. So, the public at this point are sharpening their spears. And Minister Chris Tufton is bullseye at this moment. And sharpening their, their arrows for their bows. And pulling back. And Minister Tufton is bullseye at this moment. So in order to take this off of him now. He's going to say, Bojo Bantan, just come home and I'm the foreigner, this one. So I need to explain what um, the actions that got him locked. You see what I'm saying? The detractor. The scapegoat. No, Mr. Tufton, we want to know about what go on in Jamaica with the dengue. Why people still are dead of dengue in 2019. That's what we want to know. And we want to know what you're going to do to stop this outbreak. What you're going to do to make sure no more citizens die. So hold on, the writer said. Is Buja supposed to be convicted twice? <laughs> and that may ask, I mean, I don't really understand what I go on neither. The man served his time. He was tried twice, found guilty and sentenced. Now, eight years later after, must he be hauled over the coals again and be forced to explain why he got caught in the web of drug trafficking? I think not. Like every other Jamaican reggae fan who followed the career of the mercurial artist, I was taken aback by news of his arrest and the sordid details that led to his conviction. But that cannot be how we will define one of the talented sons of our soil who made his mistake, paid the price, and now wants to resume his life of doing what he does best. Explain what? Where them want, where, where them want him to explain? Tufton himself now is in a different position. He is paid by the public purse. If 16 deaths occurred due to a dengue fever breakout on his watch that needs some explanation, Mr. Tufton. The state of the healthcare system in Jamaica is down in the dumps at this very moment. No fault of Tufton as he inherited this mess. But perhaps his energies could be spent trying to repair that instead of focusing on Jamaican sit what Jamaican citizen did in his private time. In short though, there is no Jamaican politician who is in any moral position to play holier than thou art when it comes to Bujabantan. I believe I lived through the 70s. This is the author, you know. The author is saying, I lived through the 70s into the 80s and Jamaica became a cocaine transshipment port. I was born and raised on Red Hills Road, a place that was called the New York City of Jamaica because it never slept. And in 1980, cocaine took over and that saw a rise in property crimes. Thieves were rampant. My friend, in a fit of rage, killed his brother with a cutlass because his brother stole every item of furniture and appliance out of his parents' house to pawn them for another high. The color television set his younger siblings tried to steal was the last straw and my friend went to prison because he could no longer watch as his younger brother did everything to destroy what his parents had worked so hard for. That is what hard drugs did. While there is no hard evidence, it is fair to say that cocaine could not have been trafficked through the country at the time if these politicians were not complicit or 
did not turn a blind eye. <laughs> That's why I said this is one of my favorite writers. There were days a cache of illegal guns in Jamaica, but after 1980, guns, especially those of the high-powered rifle kind, just flooded the island. So for those of you who are wondering that if this is new, it's not. Here's someone that said he lived through the 70s and 80s, and he's here giving us an account and telling us Jamaica full of gun, long time, from them time there. Who is responsible for that though? We all have made our mistakes. It's just that our mistakes were not public enough to be picked apart, examined, and judged under the media microscope. Let us give Bujabantan some time to exorcise his own demons. Judge not that ye be not judged. That is my view from the outside. Now, Mr. Walker is a multi-award winning journalist who has worked for Loop Jamaica, the Jamaica Observer, and RGR Communications Group and Nationwide Radio, among other media entities. And he now resides, resides in South Florida. Hey, hey, what a beautifully written piece. Down into the comment section now, Charles H.E. Campbell says, beautifully or brilliantly written. I totally endorse your comments. Here you know. Andy B says, even if he didn't serve time, Buju does not owe Tufton or anyone else an explanation. If you don't want to listen to his music or attend his concerts, then that's fine. He has millions of fans who still love him. Tufton needs to go and worry about the dead babies at Jubilee and the dengue fever outbreak. Mm-mm. Dennis Brown said, well said, and some. How dare he call Bujo when children and the elderly are dying in Jamaica like flies? What and who give him that moral high ground to try and deflect using Bujo? The amount of us that still love and respect Bujo but hate people like him from and still living in Jamaica is not even worth mentioning. I'm looking away to take the spotlight off of his own back. Exactly what I said. And the same thing with Vibes Cartel responsible for spiking the murder rate and the children them being unruly and all this stuff. And they locked away Vibes Cartel and the murder rate, the murder rate skyrocketed. Year after year after year after year after year after the individual they claim was responsible for it was locked away. Kirk says, Dennis, I can't understand why we would love and respect a convicted person, especially when the crime he's convicted for is so severe. While I'm a fan of Budge's music, it has been hard for me to love and respect him due to his transgressions. And while he doesn't owe me or anyone an explanation, I suspect that he will regain some love and respect by being forthright about the situation. Note that I do understand also that he is yet to speak publicly on any matter and therefore could very well do so in the future. Now, <coughs> let me end this video by saying this right here. Can the people them start argue in the comment section, you are idiot. Why are you calling the man an idiot? Explain yourself. The writer and Bojo are idiot. You still haven't explained yourself, so now I'm wondering who is the idiot. You are idiot too. Now, <laughs> it gets silly, okay? So, let me say this. Bojo owes no one no explanation. What I will say though is this. A lot of our people that go away and do time in prison, especially in whether it be Jamaica prison or US prison, the, 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 a lot of them come out and they hold doing prison time as 
a badge of honor as stripes on my shoulder. Man, a general now. That kind of stuff. And I remember reading something or hearing someone say, I don't know if it was a comedian, that's, I think it was a comedian that said, um, something's definitely wrong with our people and with our communities because in a black community, especially in a hood, <coughs> you go away to college for four years, you come back with a bachelor's degree, right? And you're met with, this motherfucker think he better than everybody else. Oh, you smart now, nigga. You smart now, huh? You go away to prison for four years and you come back. And you the man. Right? So, what I could say, and remember, I'm saying this again. Budja owes no one no explanation. He owes no one any kind of what happened. No, nothing. But, I firmly believe that a lot of people who look up to him could learn from a few details here and there. Tell them some things to scare them that are true. Some things that you've witnessed. You know people go to prison and them come out and act like, ah, I mean the years was rough, I miss my family, but you know what I mean, it was cakewalk like that. When in truth, it was hell. Break it down for them so they understand. That kind of thing. Maybe a youth that's looking up to you can say, boy, one time I never care still enough, but after me hear how him break it down, no, nah, sir. Me not, me, me make sure I don't go that way. You know what I'm saying? Or a grown person. Because uh, a lot of grown people are still like adolescent mindset peer pressure get them into things that they probably wouldn't so and these kind of things lead you into places like that before you know it they hemmed up doing time tell them about company tell them things to avoid tell them ways people can actually trick you set you up draw you in draw you out i think that would be beneficial now, like the last person said here, take into consideration that Bujo has not spoken on any matter so far yet, but his publicist has said that he's going to have a whole lot to say at his upcoming concert, the Long Walk to Freedom concert. People are saying, why is he, why is he comparing that Long Walk to Freedom? Because that's what... Nelson Mandela's struggle was dubbed from his time in prison to his walk to freedom and all this and Nelson became the uh, Prime Minister or President of South Africa and then so on so on so forth but they're saying he is no Nelson Mandela so whatever and others are saying he might not be that in your eyes but in his eyes he can equate his struggle to whatever the hell he wants to equate it to right and as long as he's come out to do positive now, like he has just set up a foundation to help disenfranchised Jamaican youths. Yeah? And you know same links them tall and big already. So he's trying to do good and trying to make amends and trying to move forward. Not trying to, he is. And I think we should encourage that. And every man has a right. A man and woman has a right. It's never too late. You live one life. Back to the drawing board, scratch that, start over, fresh. You know what I'm saying? A clean slate, let's go. Too many of us think that, okay, we have to stay up on the part and grind this out and grind this out. Not the case. All right? Leave your comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. Do you think that Bujabantan deserve, I mean, do you think that Bujabantan owes anyone any explanation? Yes or no? And... Do you think that him explaining certain things might actually help some people who are heading in a certain direction? It's Oflo TV, man. I'm out. I'm big up Bojabantan. Welcome home again. All right? Peace.